Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of hunting would always glorify the hunter. And you know, I'll say that again. Well, folks, I said, until the lions have their own historians, the tales of hunting would always glorify the hunter. Hello and welcome to the most opinionated hour on radio and the nation's thought-provoking hour. I am Nana Ansakwao, the fourth chief of the Little Republic of Akwemu Edumasa, and I say thank God it's Monday. A beautiful opportunity to meet up and perform one of radio's most important ritual. A ritual that brings patriots together, a ritual that brings great minds together, a ritual for the lovers of nation. Right here at the same time, every Monday, only on Joy 99.7 FM. And so let us all gather and make truth good. Our topic today, folks, needless hard times. Needless hard times. Folks, we can all agree to some extent that the dynamics of the world has changed. And this has caused a major upset in some, you know, a major in some nations and shock across some economies. First, it was the pandemic. And then, as usual, it was his twin sister, the war. The pandemic and the war have become twins. I don't know which one is male or female, but hey, they're twins. So first it was the pandemic, and then the other twin came, the war. Folks, however, my concern is what, as a nation, we did before the war and the lessons we have learned since the pandemic. Folks, we run an economy pegged on the dollar and is run purely on fuel. Now, these two items literally affect our DNA as soon as they change, even if you check our blood, the DNA in our blood will change. That's how far, that's how close it is, ingrained it is in us. And so in running our economy, one cannot keep their eyes off these two items, fuel and the dollar. Otherwise, folks, hell will break loose. And as I speak, it has broken loose. It's on the run. But let me quickly add that there are people in the system who are milking it. People in the system who are really pricing things, overpricing things because yeah, you see your mind, you see your mind. So they just, you know, jack things up and hike things up just because the era, you know, gives room for that kind of greed. The era gives room for that kind of greed. But yes, undoubtedly. The times are hard. Folks, but a great percentage of our current hardship is needless. The curse of no willpower is really looming on us now. Folks, it's now, maybe it's been given to us intravenously. It's in our blood now. The curse of no willpower. And the corruption momentum is wild and alive now let me try and explain folks the the, the the curse of no willpower as a country we, we 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 seem to have no ability to stop any menace that befalls us even if our lives are at stake and the sad part folks an illegality will start start small by a few persons clear and blatant illegality we will sit and wait for years and then we become overwhelmed where we don't even know how to start to deal with it. Folks, it could just be one person using the sidewalks as a store or a mini market, then two, then seven, then 20. Two years later, it's a full-fledged market with an association. And they can't be moved. Why? Because they are pleading poverty and survival. We are poor. My husband died. I have four kids. I'm pregnant. I've come from Navrongo. I don't know where I need to stay. So I need to be allowed to break the law. So, like 
everything else, we just leave it because we become overwhelmed. Folks, it could be our water bodies. I mean, that's, that's one of the lowest of the low. It could be our water bodies being destroyed. And still we are helpless. We have an army. We, we have fire service. We have the police. We have all, whatever it is. But we are helpless. We just sit and talk. Give, you know, eloquent speeches. But the water has just been destroyed. And the funny thing you hear some people say, oh, we need to educate those, you know, those of them who are engaged in that evil. We must educate. Educate who? Educate who? As if they are not aware of what they are doing. Folks, if you were to ask me, I say flog them. Flogging. What do you do? Flogging. Education there. We are now at the stage where they should be flogged. Folks, the corruption momentum should we even start today to change our mindset if today by some switch we're able to change our mindset folks there are so many already corrupted people in the system coming up who are ready to steal their portion of the national cake it may take maybe 60 100 years to really clear corrupted minds out of the system folks the students who are cheating in exams. I mean, like, in your face, let me cheat the paper, you know. And, and, and those who are spending huge sums of money just to win school elections. For they are going to be the black belters of corruption. Yeah, Taekwondo, Taekwondo. They are going to be the black belters. Shotokan, Kung Fu, corruption. Folks, they will warn, they will write a letter. Eh? You have CEOs writing, writing a letter to you, warning them that if you don't let me steal from the company's coffers, I'll come to your office and beat you. I mean, if a child can tell the invigilator, if you don't let me cheat on the paper, I'll beat you. If that child gets into a CEO position, that's what they'll do. They will write to the ombudsman and tell them that if you don't let me cheat, if you don't let me steal, I will come to your office and I will show you where power lies folks let me divert a little bit but it's all the same issue rice just rice I, rice is now staple food there's no more Chinese food there's no more foreign food rice is now a Ghanaian food or probably a world food and I'm sure it's eating more than any food in the country more than kinky more than fufu I think rice Yet, rice production is still a mystery. A month, yeah, it comes three months, seeds come, it's still a mystery. I bought some brown rice. Folks, before you cook it, you may need a microscope. You need patience. Patience. You need enough water that you're going to use to wash it. The chaff. The stones and just the dirt. Why are we really saying that I mean, it's beyond us to grow rice and neatly and cleanly bag it 2022 and more? What we are with This has become like so beyond us, folks. What does it take? I mean, maybe I'm not in, in the agri section, but those of you that agree, what does it really take? To, to, to put the, the, the rice in the machine to clean it well and, and, and bag it. Folks, yet in the same country that hasn't got a super high tech rice milling machine, the same country can import hundreds and hundreds of super luxury cars. So then, what's an excuse of not having a super duper? rice meal and if there is why is it not cleaning the rice for us just rice should this should this be be on the table for discussion in hard times like this but it is i'm for the reason why tall our good old tall won't be given some of our crude to refine is mind-boggling it, 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 it is now bordering on a spiritual problem. We have to probably co consult some oracle. Yanko Abisa to go and ask, why? 
it has gone beyond common sense. It has gone beyond technology, gone beyond economy. Now we need to consult the oracles to ask why it is that we can't just have some sort of an agreement to say when you take some of the oil, bring some to tour to refine. Strange phenomenon. So we have to import putting all that pressure on the good old city. Folks, we need to import putting all that pressure on the good old city. And once we report and we come, people will also steal it and send it away. So, you know, at this moment, you, you would have thought the discussion was to how, do, how is it that we expand tour? That should have been the discussion. How do we expand tour so that as we discover more oil fields, we have increased capacity to refine? After all, we are ready to consume. And when we, I don't know anybody who credits it, when we buy the petrol too, yet yeah. So there's a ready market. And I'm sure this will cut out the transportation cost. And since the refinery is here, we may be able to control the margins on it. Bring down the cost of fuel, which literally affects everything. But the cares of no willpower. The cares of no willpower. Folks, we are told that those who double in the importation of finished product, they prefer the status quo. Send them your money to the sanity. So they go and bring their finished product and sell to us. There's no way we have to refine it. And somehow it stays. But look, look at it. Here's a, a nation in the, in the face of bankruptcy. In the face of shame and new war. Shame. We are down on our knees begging for arms. But still, we would rather choose that than make policies that soften, you know, the pressure on us. So I'm telling you, where we have we need to go and see some oracle to ask. What is happening? Has somebody cursed us? Because I don't know. Here we are, begging, need some small support to stay alive because we are, we are literally going down under. But little, little policies to start mitigating some of these problems. No. And go the Nienka. Ebeko go the Nkokona. Folks, the youth are getting enraged. A huge percentage have already given up. I mean, if you're, if you're anybody in national security, that must be scary. Young, red-blooded, and giving up. <laughs> Not the pensioners, though. No, no, no. Young, red-blooded, educated, and giving up. Hey, are we safe? Folks, I mean, can, you see, can we even start by extending Friday wear to everyday wear? Can we just say that in your Friday wear, it's, it's everyday wear? I don't know. Okay, because it's in the Constitution, say Constitution, say. But can we start by extending Friday wear to everyday wear? I mean, governments can approach the unions and plead with them. Approach the clergy and plead with them. Any worker in Ghana, apart from embassies that we have no control of, the official attire is sewn in Ghana. Until we build a fabric industry, let's just settle with sewn in Ghana. Folks, this single action will mop up so many youth and increase you know, local income to you know, get good, a, good, a good proportion. We just need to introduce good standards into the into the industry and instill on you know quality. And within six months, I doubt if you can even get a sewing machine to buy in Ghana, it will be finished. Where people are sitting at home who are now being pressured, these ladies they, they mean they don't even repeat. There will be pressure. Folks. Already there are Ghanaian designers doing magic and wonderful things. Really, you know, 
up there. We just need more. And with a policy like this, it would force more of them to come. And let me single out my own daughter, Brie Redua. Works magic. You know, Pamatadi will be a say, wow, if he hifa. And I'm sure such a thing would just boost industries. There will be people who will be going there to learn how to sow, to also come and enjoy the opportunity. Real opportunity. But here we are. Here we are, folks. Hanging on a thread. All the leaders would have to do is to try and carry the people along. At the moment, the disconnect between leadership and the, and the people is too, is too wide. If they can find a good bridge to bring people along, to, to let us feel that they, we are all in the same boat, I am sure we would come along with it. And it's such a beautiful thing that it, it, it would just run wild. Run wild every worker, baby. Whether you're private, whether you're government, whatever, whatever it is, you have to wear sewn in Ghana. Sewn in Ghana. You'll be amazed how many jobs that will create. Folks, we here we still can't even stop illegal fishing. Pair trolling, you see, and yet busy from ever since I gotten aware of the word petrol until today i'm sure it's still going on it's, it's like we have no ability to stop anything if i let me break your heart even further so shamefully we couldn't develop our salt industry a low hanging fruits salt i mean every i mean industries i mean salt and i mean you you, you cannot have say uh, you know you have too much salt no 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 there's demand for salt. We could produce salt, but we could. Right here at Pambro Salt, good old Apintin, did his best. Right here at Pambro Salt. Folks, literally next door to the salt mine, there's Empire Cement. Hey. <laughs> literally next door to the salt mine is Empire Cement. Folks, the people from Makati Hill have complained. They have taken it to court, jumped and jigged. The court says, no, it can't be allowed. EPA says, no, cement particles will go into people's home and onto the salt, so this cannot be allowed. I was shocked to see that after all, the, don't do it, don't do it. Almost the factory, it's complete. They built the factory. I mean, sometimes you just have to, you know, clap. So our leaders, you just have to call them and clap for them. So one say more. Honestly, yes, it's all born same more. How, how, how is it done? It's like maybe oh, akuma subiano. Regardless of the impact, you can just do it. Regardless, whether it's whether it affects somebody's health, whatever it is, you can just do it. Now, someday in the future, folks, when our children are wondering how come it is that there was a. a, a a cement factory built next door to, to a salt mine, it would be a very interesting read. Cement factory next door to a salt mine. We couldn't stop it. We couldn't stop it. And, and nobody is in jail for it. Nobody has been sacked. The, 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 the factory hasn't been blown apart. You see what? We can't stop it. The case of no willpower. Some of the things we do, folks, really hurts. Maybe that's what disconnects some people. You know, get that disconnect from people. Say, you know something, I'm not the one going to die for this country. Maybe these are some of the things that somebody will wake up and say, I won't die for this country. It's me, myself, and I here and now. We can't be bothered about anything else. So, folks, maybe we can start with the things we can do just to reduce imports. There must be certain things that we can easily do. And we must start with the things we can do. At least start. Folks, we sit and say COVID and the war. How have they been a factor to the issues I have mentioned? How did COVID spoil our water bodies? 
How did the war stop us from having good polished rice? Doesn't matter how they can, they can fight from morning to evening. How does it stop you from growing your rice and polishing it? Indeed, even those who are fighting the Ukraine or Kunto Kwanukra, he's exporting green. So, so what is our excuse? And then the whole day is rained. Ah, if you put rice in the ground somewhere, three months later, you take it, put it in. A, in a, so what, what, what did the Koro or the war do about that? Are you plant the, 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 the rice and it says, oh, no, there's Koro, so I'm not going to grow. Or you put it in the mill and the mill says, oh, no, 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 there's a war, so I'm not going to polish the rice. My folks, how did Kuru stop us instituting a wear Ghana policy? Oh, I'm coughing, so I can't institute a policy. On top of all these inactions, folks, people are generally disconnected with the country. They're not connected. So we hear customs officers openly ripping the states off with no remorse. And we are yet, we, we wait and see if anybody will be even called into action or interdicted. Yati Azo, Yati are transferred. No, Elibo, you know, you don't know, why, baby, hold it. There's not enough, you know, things going past that border for the person to steal or, you know. Now, look, people are barely surviving. Pensioners are stretched, their values just diminished overnight. The same amount of money that used to stretch, you know, maybe four weeks, six weeks now, can barely do two weeks. Whereas they have no income coming in, their children and their grandchildren too are struggling, barely to make a living to even come and support them. So what is our excuse to be in this mess? Folks, what is our excuse to be in this mess? No, cause me there. I mean, my my, me see, I'm quite cool. I'm going to be set. I'm to our, you know, no go. Let's go and let's go and find out. Because that's where we are. Because common sense, we've gone past it. We've gone past economy. We've gone past technology. So we be a dude here. Maybe spiritually, I'm going to be set. So what is happening? Zero three zero two two one six five four one. In Accra, capital city, you build a, 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 a cement mine next to a salt mine. So it's not like it's in the bush somewhere, just all the drunk. No, 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 in Accra. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Let's see you, Kwebisa. Hello, who's talking to me? Good evening, Anna. Thank God for your life. Uh, thank you too, Rajiman Joseph. Anna, you see, sometimes we think people having their crest around their neck is the past so. <laughs> but some of you speaking the truth are more than the pastor. <laughs> and now uh, you've mentioned rice, salt. It seems um, you are thinking of sugar, and you mentioned so you didn't mention sugar. <laughs> and I'm supposing our family is working, and you are not buying finished products from outside. This our our CD against the dollar wouldn't have suffered a lot like this. Supposing you are producing enough. For our own consumption. I mean, COVID will never do anything to us. And now, you think about the rice. Rice is everywhere, in every occasion, in every institution. Whatever we do is rice. And now, if you look at the number of rice, the tons of rice being imported into this country through the port, and now, it will be marveled. Hmm. See, I was once eating food and one of the seeds fell somewhere. I mean, I got a purpose, then I harvested. We are blessed to the extent that on this our land, nothing you plant wouldn't be well. Look at the rainfall pattern this season or this year. We cannot provide rice, produce rice for ourselves, go to water region and our down some areas. We have vast lands. Yet we are here importing rice. And we have people graduating as essential officers, like agricultural officers. And we talk about GDP. Anna, you are more than a truth. God bless you. God bless you too, my brother. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. Hello, who's talking to me? Hey, no, no, good evening. Good evening. I have a serious issue today I want to talk about. Let me, let me hear you. Yeah, very well. You see, do you know, do you know uh, Sakama Junction? Yes. You see, there, there's these boys that come there dressed in the uniform, 
and they carry people's babies and then bring them to the full or the roadside in the time of preaching and begging money. A brother of mine called me from U.S. and said, ah, what is this that's happening in Ghana? My brother, I'm begging you, talk to the authorities. They, they, they bring what to the junction? Sakama Junction, uh -huh. a, a first light. Uh -huh. they, they come out with people's kids, you know, Oh, okay, 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 yeah, 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 that's the new phenomenon, now. yeah. And they say Abu Frani Yari and come and give us money, that's the new, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that's the new trend now. Well, yeah, hello. Right, it's wrong. Well, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm begging of you, please talk to the authorities. Well, very I'm soon. I'm begging you, that's my concern now. It's very hurting to me. No, no, I, I think I agree with you on that. I agree with yeah, you. Yes, so please, for God's sake. Thank you. Authorities for me. I'm, sure, I'm sure they have heard you. I'm sure they've heard you. Uh, I don't even know if it's healthy for the child to be sat in that sun, you know, with a tube stuck in the stomach. And I don't know. I don't know. Hello. Oh, who's yeah. talking to me? Oh, hello. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie Queno. Eddie, let me hear you. Uh, uh, MBE. I'm the chairman of the McCarthy Hill Residents Association. Ah. Ah. You, and, uh, yeah. I, I mean, we did a press conference, uh, which uh, I'm very, very happy and glad you know that uh, you are raising the uh, issue on on the on the media okay uh we had a, a lot of support from the from the press last week mm -hmm. now i've been involved in this uh, fight from the beginning and i must say that you know the attitude of some of our public institutions and the public officials you know is not appalling we 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 have we haven't been served very well by by those people in authority i mean the epa Ghana Standards Board, uh, the uh, Minister of uh, Trade, you know, what it called science and technology, they haven't been able to stop the factory from operating. Now, let me let me cry. Did, 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 you go, did you go to court on this thing? Well, we are in court. We are in court. We are, we are in court. Mm -hmm. we, we, we sue them. Uh, but of course, you know, the, the legal process here is very long. Uh, but we are in court again on the 21st of October. But we, we've gone through the whole, you know, institutions. We've gone through. But I, I, uh, I, I let, let me. If I'm wrong. I heard EPA saying that uh, no, they don't. They don't agree for the factory to be close to the area. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the EPA, have, you know, the EPA have been very, very supportive. They, they've insisted from day one that the factory shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be producing uh, cement. Initially, the factory approached the EPA, and they asked for permission and permit to produce cement bags. Mm -hmm. So the EPA gave them uh, uh, permission to do that. Then they changed their business plan to do uh, to produce cement and bag cement. You know, the EPA said no. And the EPA have, have uh, what do you call it, uh, insisted up to now that they are not going to issue them with a permit. The uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, and they got involved. They did a, a, a review ministerial review, and they came, upheld you know, the EPA decision not to uh, produce a mate. But they are still doing it. So the question I'm asking myself is, who is running this country? Is it the Chinese or our own government? Good question. Very good question. You know, very good question, but very sad. Really, really, really sad. Hello, who's hey. talking to me? Yeah, hello. Good evening, Nana. Good evening. Yeah, thank you for this program. My name is Abu Mohammed. I'm calling from Japan. Let me you hear see, you, my brother. When we meet boys, boys in Japan, we used to do this type of discussion that, assuming all the schools in Volta region, the uniform they wear, come from the factory. Because we have a textile factory that mm -hmm. Saturdays and Wednesdays you go to the Japan market, you never see even a handkerchief that they say is from this factory. But you see some... 30 grade uh, jerseys from nearby to go in, in the market. Why not? There are a lot of tailors around, both male and female. Now it is a norm. Both men and female learn how to sew the men and women dress. They gather. Why not put all of them into the factory? If people have funeral, go there. Then they do your funeral for the, the schools. They do. Even the, the handkerchief, our doormat, the curtains we use, our bedsheets are all from other other. Why not have them in our own factory? And this rice matter you talk, we, we do rice farm in Akusi. Mm -hmm. When you go there, right now, even the government too is not there. You watch uh, these Chinese people, and you see the machines they used to do this farming. 
just like you said, why not bring this machine instead of V8 and all that? If you create employment, do we have to be PAT holders to understand this common common knowledge? Hmm. Sometimes you just don't understand. I thank you very much for listening and calling 0302-216-541. Hello, who's talking to me? Hello, Nana. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Here. Come again. Oh, Tafik, let me hear you. Yes, um, Nana, you see, sometimes it hurts because this is our leader. I now sometimes understand why some of the youth, instead of arguing or disagreeing with what our leaders say, they tend to insult them. Sometimes they can't control it because you don't understand what exactly they think about us. I, Nana, we won't say that. But I would like to ask this. If the registered voters, about 50% decides not to vote, what happens? Will the election still be held? Because I, I think we have to we have to try that. If we, the entire nation or half of us decide to vote for the election, then this MCP and NDC guys would, 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 would start to think that, yes, we don't like what they are doing. Other than that, it's only because that we say vote for CEO of Tough Smart is Tofik. He's the CEO of Tough Smart. Hello, who's talking to me? Hello, good evening, Nana. Good evening. Uh, Sham, Sham, let me hear you. Uh, Nana, today everybody's going to talk about the problems. Hmm. Me, I just want to go on the solution. Mm -hmm. um, Ghana, as we are all aware, our political right or our mandate as Ghanaians is that every four years we want to change who administers the country or who governs us. Mm -hmm. Right now, as it stands, every Ghanaian has seen what the past government did and the previous government has done. I entreat every Ghanaian not to sit on the fence when 2024 comes. This is the only legal mandate we have as Ghanaians. Let us push these two aside because we've seen that they cannot run the country. So for us, for us, Ghana, Nibia, Utia, Nibia, Mr. Menkonko, Tuaba, Emma, MPP, Anna, NDC. The moment you do that, you are putting the country in turmoil. The moment you do that, they will pay other people to go and vote for you because you don't want to vote. You think it's beneath you. So please, one of the solutions is that we've seen these people don't want to do the job. Let's just change the presidential and the MPs. Both the MPs, they should leave. We should put independent candidates there. Let's see what they would also do. Let us put citizens there. A Mason, you can see it. Carpenter, you can see it. But when the politician comes, he wants to lie. Look about me. I'm just listening to him right now. A whole vice president, you go and mount the podium and you do politics. You are telling NDC people who told you every Ghanaian is an NDC member. It's very sad. So, Nana, that's the only solution I have for us right today. Let us vote them out next four years. Let us just see what will happen to Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's my brother, Shem Mixing Yeboa. Hello, who's talking to me? Hello, Nana. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kofi. Kofi, let me hear you. Nana, the best problem uh, uh, greed, corruption, and politics. Greed from a uh, big men and women who still want to become big men and women. So they will be greedy to do anything to find their money. This thing that you are talking about, this is that you are talking about, is led by Ghanaians. Hmm. Corruption from a public sector. Everybody wants to drive a big car. Everybody wants to drive, live in a big house. So no matter what, they will do everything to get their money. So they are our public sector, they are paid as not much they are in their lifestyle. And we are all looking on. And as for the NDC and MPP, until we get them out of the system, Ghana will continue to live like this. Thank you very much. It's a long one, but let me try and read it. It says, of course it's needless. This is from Engineer Boachi. Of course it's needless. It's self-inflicted. We have everything under the sun to develop into a high-income country and support the rest of the continent. I mean, every single component of, of building a house, factory, machinery, road, school, hospital, etc. right here in Ghana. We can get bitumen from oil plastics and fertilizer from natural gas glass solar solar pv uh, microchip and micro optic cable from silica sand caustic soda from salt 
emulsion paint from carloin, gloss from oil, aluminium from bauxite, steel from iron ore, and manganese cement and lime from limestone, bricks from clay, furniture from timber. We can get solar PV and electric car lithium batteries from huge deposit of lithium discovered in Ghana. Above all, we have water, sunshine, and our people are very fine. I must say who you can be who can be trained to do anything under the sun. How sad a state of our affairs. And I say and on top of all that we even have peace. Hello, who's talking to me? Good evening. Good evening. Yes, Nana, I can tell you for a fact that mm -hmm. Ghanaians are capable. Mm. I work in a multinational company. Mm -hmm. We have only three expatriates who are managing staffs of about 100. Third party service providers exclu excluded. We can do it. I'm telling you for a fact. By chance, has not been given to the Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. You understand? Everything has been foreign, foreign, foreign. Check. From the cement industries, they are there. Check from the mining, they are there. Check from everywhere. But one thing that I'm trying to put across: if you don't stand up against these Chinese people, now they only know of your good. They are still discovering. They will see other things that are in Ghana. And if you don't take time, you'll be here. And as a Ghanaian, there are some places that you should even enter, you will not. So it is time. This song, Arise Ghana Youth for your country. You, the media, need to assist the Ghana youth for now. We are begging you people, other than that, there's no future for the Ghanaian youth. I'm telling you for a fact. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. Hello, who's talking to me? No, no, okay. no, okay, no. let me hear you. Okay, so um, they built. Um, a building has been raised at where it's not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who gave the permit for that building? Well, as far as we're concerned, nobody said, so we asked someone for a permit. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to clap. So sometimes you have to clap for them. I want to see when the Chinese discover certain things. They maybe discover our politicians. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, me, when when uh, the president ordered for those who are built in the Union way, those structures should be should be brought down. I was I was, I was concerned about who gave the permit because those, that person cannot sit in the office and you say you, you go and break somebody's building. Somebody didn't do his or her work, and that person is still sitting in office taking salary. No, no, that's the way I'll cover it. It goes way deeper than we are saying. See. The, 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 these printers who, 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 who print the textbook for the, for, for the, for the schools, you know? mm -hmm. Do you know that when this MPP government came, those who were there already, you know, they are busy contracting to be in they are they now go to China and go and paint the book wow. and bring it. Wow. You are the old ones, they were printing it in Ghana here. So wow. the money stays here. And so, they are the old ones. And those that are printing it right now, they are going to print it at China and bring it. Doesn't make sense. In this same government, are hoping to promote to local businesses. See, these car companies that are moving into this country, setting up man and uh, different uh, manufacturing uh, this thing here, assembly this thing here. And I, see, I was doing some reading and I got to some realization that see, when you go out there, the market there, you know, electronic vehicles are taking over. All. So. In Ghana, in Africa here, no, we are not, we, we've not gotten there yet. So it's a new market for them. So they are not, it's not, it's not necessarily that they are coming here to do what they need. They think that there's market here. We are not catching up. So they are just coming to cash in. And they will come and set up plans here. And we are so happy. Especially our president is so happy about it. But this is, this is a reality on the ground. You see. Good evening, why? Good evening, my brother, for listening and for calling. Hello, who's talking to me? But my name is Yadi from Tom Come, come again. Yadi from Tom Tom. Let me hear you, my brother. You, you, you made a point. You said that 
It's actually a research, a research material from Legono. It's, it's a huge percentage that have given up. They have finished school and have given up. A huge percentage. It's worry because yeah. our patient can't come with any more. And I'm um, saying I'm saying sometimes I'm saying to my wife that if someone is hungry and, and he wants to eat and you're not, you're not giving him that food, the next thing is this is this a break into your house and look for the food. You should be very worried. You mm. should be very, very worried as, as a country. That's all I can say. Thank you very much, my brother.